Okay, so this is part two of Dr. Curry's testimony in which she is rebutting Amber's expert witness, Dr. Hughes. Now, if you've watched part one of this, which is on my channel, um, according to Dr. Curry, Dr. Hughes essentially helped Amber fabricate and fake PTSD. So I'm sure Amber's lawyers are not happy. And just, I want everybody to really, like, look at her face here. You know, you can see the crazy in her eyes. So I <laughs> I don't even need to say anything. Um, if you are new to my channel, please do me the favor of hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and share these videos. I think it's important for people to be able to get these little clips. There are many people who are working and don't have time to listen to this for eight hours every single day, and they just want the highlights. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Results you believe Dr. Hughes to have misrepresented? Look at that smug smile. For instance, um, wait a minute. the TSI-2. Yes. Um, so Dr. Hughes generally said that testing supported PTSD and that there was an etiology for her trauma of intimate partner violence. Um, she did reference that uh, essentially the, I can't remember if she said that the trauma symptom inventory indicated PTSD, but she did say that the elevation on that validity scale is consistent with PTSD, and that's simply not true. Um, that Ooh. scale was designed and has been tested and shown to be there to show when somebody is endorsing extremely unusual items that are not consistent with PTSD. And even wow. though when some people are experiencing PTSD, their distress level is so high that they'll engage in what we call a cry for help, and they may sometimes exaggerate distress. Again, when you're looking at scores as high as Ms. Hurd's, and then you're not seeing indications of PTSD in the more subtle tests where she doesn't know what she's endorsing, there's, it's good evidence that her over-endorsement on that one test um, is because of the reason the scale was made to detect exaggeration and feigning of symptoms. Oh, dang. Is this the test that uh, resulted in the 98 percentile yes. score? Damn. Yes, on that, square, on that atypical response scale. And, and what does that 98 percentile score represent? So that 98th percentile score just represents that among 98% 98, 98 of people who take that test would not have endorsed. She scored more of those unusual items that are not consistent with PTSD than 98% of people who have ever taken that test. Does that relate to this concept you talked about before called feigning? Yes. What is feigning again? Well, feigning is essentially exaggerating symptoms of a disorder. Um, I think the third wow. thing you indicated you were going to talk about was uh, self-reports and personal opinion as facts. What are you talking about there? So in any science and in psychology specifically, it's really important that we use precise language and we say what we mean and we do not present opinions as facts because when you are in the role of an expert witness um, or an expert in any setting, essentially a lay person may not be able to detect the difference between yes. something that is a personal opinion that you're giving versus something that is substantiated by research data, test data, reliable test methods. So uh, our ethics wow. talk about, especially the specialty guidelines of forensic psychology, the responsibility we have to distinguish between data, then inferences we're making from that data, what the data can mean, sort of like those tables I do. I put the data, the inferences based on the research, and then what my ultimate opinion is integrating all of that data. And it's very important that we clarify that to the fact finder, to the judge, the jury, that's our responsibility, that we do not cloak personal opinions or the self-report of an examinee as an expert fact or somehow scientifically based when it is just a personal opinion or self-report of an examinee. What do you mean by self-report? 
The self-report is essentially what the examinee tells you during the interview. Okay. Um, when did Dr. Hughes do this most? She did this most when describing instances of alleged IPV, um, and there's also an issue there because one of our ethics also discusses the importance of relevance and withholding, essentially constraining our testimony to the data and not including private information, personal information that unnecessarily compromises the dignity of uh, any of the litigants. She provided a lot of uh, what was Ms. Hurd's report to her, the allegations of abuse, when describing Mr. Depp, who she had not examined, Ooh. when describing Mr. Depp's behavior, his motivations. I believe she used yeah. the word obsessive jealousy quite a few times. She did. Talked about Ms. Hurd being in a highly dangerous situation. Yep. These are simply things that we cannot detect based on testing and a yeah, psychological it's just Amber's, evaluation. Amber's we have claims. to evaluate the person. We have to get consent. <laughs> Um, and we can only describe an individual, not whether or not IPV has occurred. And Oof. we certainly shouldn't go into explicit details about sexual encounters or other things that are highly prejudicial, shocking, and hard to forget. Yes! Boom! Um, Dr. Hughes, Hughes says felt that it. Dr. has PTSD. Do you agree? I do not. Why not? The results of my multi-method comprehensive evaluation based on carefully selected, researched, relevant test, method, test instruments, based on comparing those instruments to Ms. Hurd's self-report, observing Ms. Hurd's behavior over 12 direct hours of assessment, reviewing copious notes from prior therapists who indicated symptoms in their notes, reviewing the notes of Nurse Filotti, previously Nurse Borum, who spent, I believe at one point, almost two months with Ms. Hurd daily, um, reviewing the notes of her treating providers, uh, let's see, uh, all of the legal documents and discovery. There was no evidence of PTSD. Wow, none. So she How made it up. evidence of PTSD generally Exhibited. So really the bottom line in a forensic psychological evaluation is a change in functioning. That's what we're looking for. Again, I said we don't have a crystal ball. We're not wizards. We can't get into somebody's head. What we're looking for were their identifiable changes in the way the person engaged in their world. Were they able to keep a job? PTSD is an extremely disabling diagnosis. When a person has true PTSD, it is difficult for them to work. You'll see unemployment, job loss. It causes extreme levels of distress and impairment. There's divorce. There's uh, isolation and estrangement from children, from family members. Extreme alcohol abuse, often a, a string of sudden DUIs when the person never had any before. They become homebound. They can't go to the store. They're certainly not going to events. They're not uh, having success in their film career, usually. They're not <laughs> exercising every day, pursuing their hobbies, being avid readers, obtaining level three sommelier training, having uh, dinner parties with friends, speaking to public groups. Uh, those are just indications of very high functioning. And when you're looking for a decrease in functioning over time, that is inconsistent with that decrease. Dang. What about Dr. Hughes's suggestion that Mr. Waldman's statements served as a trigger for Ms. Hurd's PTSD? All right. Oof. Unbelievable. And just remember, guys, that um, Amber's uh, Amber's team is down to only um, a couple hours left on their clock. Johnny's team has about three times as much time on the clock. And so they are, every time they have to, um, no, I, you know what? I don't think it's when they object. It is when she's going to cross-examine Dr. Mommy. She knows she only has a limited amount of time. So she has to be, and we're talking about Elaine Bredhoft, Amber's attorney, she has to be very concise 
and quick because she doesn't have a lot of time to go back and forth. <laughs> look, at, look at the judge's face right now. What do you guys think that the judge is thinking? I look at Elaine. She's like, no. <laughs> she's shaking her head. What do you guys think that the judge is thinking right now? The look on her face. What do you, what do you think it is? Is she saying, enough, Elaine. I'm sick of your nonsense. What do you think is going through her head? <laughs> and what do we think Johnny's doing? Is he drawing pictures? Dr. Hughes had suggested taking notes. that uh, perhaps Ms. Hurd's PTSD was somehow triggered. What's your view on that? I would say that it can't be triggered if PTSD isn't present. Oh! Thank you very much, Doctor. All right. Boom! <laughs> You can't trigger PTSD if you don't have it in the first place. Ding. Zing. Take that. Hughes. Felted. Dr. Curry, I just want to make sure that uh, we all remember you're not board certified, correct? No, I'm not. Okay. What a snot. And you've been licensed for how long? I've been licensed for 10 years. Okay. And you are being paid by Mr. Depp's legal team to be here, correct? Yes. How yeah, just like Dr. Hughes was paid. So far? I actually don't know. Over 100,000? I truly don't know. I don't do my own books. Over 200,000? She I just answered you. Over 300,000? She just. That would be way too much, but I do not know. Okay. Um, now, just so that we all remember, you had dinner at Mr. Depp's house for three to four hours. <laughs> so? With Mr. Depp, Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, and Ms. Vasquez, correct? I was interviewed. She was being I interviewed. I asked if there was anything I could eat because at about three hours I started to get hungry. Mr. Depp then offered to order takeout for the entire team. So you had dinner with, <laughs> at Mr. Depp's home. This is called with Mr. grasping Waldman, for straws. We've Mr. already Chu, talked about this. Ms. Vasquez and Mr. This is Depp, what she's correct? wasting her time on. Yes. And you had drinks as well, correct? I actually don't know. I do remember that there were drinks. Do you recall testifying earlier that you did have a drink, a mule something? No, I remember testifying that there might have been a mule. A okay. Moscow mule. Okay, thank you. We, did, we didn't have animals there as well, right? No animals. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. and, and you talked about transparency. I just want to make sure you had several uh, designations, expert designations and reports in this case, correct? Yes. And in not one of them did you disclose that you had dinner and drinks at Mr. Depp's oh house my for God. three to four hours with Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, and Ms. Vasquez. Is that correct? Ms. Bredehoff, you're mischaracterizing what occurred. I, Dr. Curry, please answer the question. Not once did you disclose this in any of your reports. I did not correct? disclose that I was interviewed as that standard procedure. <laughs> but it's true that you have never gone to a client's house to be interviewed for an expert witness She's position, such correct? An ass. Yes, because I never had a client that was essentially homebound because of their celebrity status. All right. Oh. And, and you talked to Mr. Depp for three to four hours. Uh, before taking on the role of assessing Ms. Hurd and deciding whether she was suffering from any distress, correct? I did not talk to Mr. Depp. I was talking to his legal team, and he was there to observe. He was Ooh. present for the three to four yes. hours. Oh, and are you saying now he just stayed silent and said nothing all, all day? I don't recall what he didn't or didn't do. I was answering questions. Okay. She has beautiful now, eyes. Your Dr. Mommy's eyes are beautiful. Is limited to whether Amber Heard suffers from PTSD currently. Is that correct? Yes, I was okay. tasked with conducting an evaluation okay. to determine Ms. Hurd's mental you know, status. We very, very strict time limitations. Whose okay. fault is that, because Elaine? This case to the jury. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate if you just answer my question rather than trying to go for sure. it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. What a now, bitch. After so you had the likeable. dinner, you then provided a designation in February of 2021 in which you said, and this is long before you ever saw Amber Heard, correct? 
you said that Amber Heard, quote, exhibits patterns of behavior that are consistent with co-occurring cluster B personality disorder traits, especially borderline personality disorder, end of quote, correct? No. No, you, we went through this before. We did. But, and, and that was on the designation, was it not? I, I told you last time that I did not write that. Okay, and you don't know who did on the legal team, correct? No. Okay, and then I also asked you, if you may recall, whether you listened to the audio recording in which Mr. Depp taunted Amber Heard that she had a borderline personality disorder. Do you recall that? I recall you asking me that, yes. Did you recall listening to that audio tape? I don't recall Mr. Depp taunting Ms. Heard. I do recall that he at some point suggested she might have that diagnosis. Okay, and that was back in these audio tapes back when they were together, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, you've never before been asked to testify or serve as an expert with respect to someone who has bipolar disorder, correct? No, as I previously stated, that's not true. All right. <laughs> oh, I love it. Not up here anymore. Oh, You're my on goodness. Approach. All right. You love to see it. I have to say, at least Elaine is dressed a little bit better today than she has been um, previously. You know, some of the outfits she wears, it's like, oof, <laughs> you know, you're getting paid how much money to, uh, to be here? You know, can we dress a little less like a grandma? I don't know, maybe she is a grandma, though. I guess it's not nice to make fun of people's clothing, but... Amber today is looking very smug and arrogant as usual. She's been doing this weird thing where she, I guess she's looking at the cameras that are present in the courtroom and she stares like she is staring into your soul. And it's very jarring, you know, it's kind of chilling because you can just see that sort of like calculating cunning mentality you know you can see her doing that little smirk now, she you recall does testifying in your deposition on march 21 2022 correct yes and, and you were under oath at that time correct yes and the question i just showed you on page 207 line five have you ever been asked to testify or serve as an expert with respect to whether someone has bipolar disorder? And your answer at that time was no, correct? Yes, I had forgotten that case. Okay. And have you ever been asked to testify whether anyone has behavioral or characterological conduct that suggests they may be an IPV perpetrator? I can't. Yeah, I may have. It's difficult after about 250 cases it's difficult to remember specifically. All right, and have you ever been qualified as an expert in the area of IPV? No. And have you ever been qualified to testify as an expert in domestic abuse or violence? Violent, oh, domestic. Abuse uh, or violence? Yes, that's been a component of testimony. May I question right. Oh, here it comes. She thinks she's got a gotcha. Why doesn't she, why hasn't she given her her own copy of this? That's ridiculous. How much money are they being paid? They can't give her her own copy to look at? Really? Come on now. Ridiculous. Wasting time as usual. Line 16 of page 207. Have you ever been qualified as an expert in the area of IPV? Your answer on line 20 was no. Under she oath, just repeated right? that. Then the next question, have you ever been qualified to testify as an expert in domestic abuse or violence? That And goes into page 208, line 4. The answer then under oath was no. Now, you would agree that the literature is quite clear that trauma-based sim symptoms such as PTSD or complex PTSD have symptoms that overlap 
with borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality what? disorder, yes? Yes. Okay, and you would agree that it's important to use valid and reliable measures for an accurate diagnosis, Look at correct? Her. Absolutely. Okay. Amber Sneeding. You chose, however, not to administer the structured clinical interview for DSM-5 personality disorders, the SCID, is that correct? I did. Okay, and would you agree that that is a state-of-the-art structured clinical oh, interview? Please. Not for a forensic evaluation with a sophisticated examinee. But to determine if a personality disorder is present. You no, not saying. in this setting. You don't agree with that? I do not. And you don't agree that that is the gold standard assessment for reliable, accurate for psychiatric reliable. diagnosis? It's a good one, but for treatment settings especially. Okay. Now, did Ms. Hurd, you said you talked about, you read all of the treatment records, right? Yes. Okay. Do you recall reading the treatment records for the psychologist Bonnie Jacobs, who saw Amber Heard over five years? I do. And did you see anything in Bonnie Jacobs' notes over five years in which she diagnosed Ms. Heard with borderline personality or histrionic personality disorder? That's no. Now, you also treatment. saw the notes it's of Dr. The same thing. Con Con Connell Cohen, correct? Mm -hmm. And you even attended his deposition, correct? Yes. All right, and he saw Amber for roughly two years. He was part of the Dr. Kipper connection, mm -hmm. right? Do diagnose. Yes. Correct. Okay, and did you see anything in Dr. Cowan's notes, um, and did he say in his deposition that he diagnosed Amber Heard with borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder? I saw the symptoms clearly delineated throughout his notes and in his deposition. Ooh. He does not use diagnoses, so he would not have diagnosed her. He oh. said specifically in his deposition he did not diagnose he her. He doesn't that, diagnose. Correct? Yes, and he also specifically stated that he does not use diagnoses. All right. And you also have seen Dr. Oh, Banks, Dr. Amy Banks, the psychiatrist, her oh, deposition, wait. correct? Yes, and did Dr. I, not Anderson. her deposition. I reviewed her notes in the transcript. All right. Did Dr. Anderson diagnose Ms. Heard with pers borderline personality disorder or a histrionic personality disorder? I don't believe she pro provided any diagnosis since she was a couples therapist. All right. Now, you've said quite a bit about Don Hughes, but do you remember how many years of experience Don Hughes has in IPV and domestic abuse and violence? I know it's quite a bit. Extensive, and she is board certified, correct? Yes, she is. All right, and she so? spent 29 hours of examination with Amber Heard, she, did she not? Yes, mostly okay. interviewing. All right, and she admitted, and she interviewed her therapists, Bonnie Jacobs and Connie Cowell, correct? Yes. And she also interviewed Amber's late mother? Yes. Okay, and she administered 12 different tests over the period of that time, correct? Well, as I said, the majority of those were checklists, which are inappropriate for the forensic setting. I, I understand that's what mm -hmm. you say, but she administered 12 different tests, correct? If you want to qualify them as tests, sure. Okay. And so you did you disregard what it, no, I'm not even gonna say that. Okay. Let's go ask. to the CAPS 5 and PTSD. Now you assessed Ms. Hurd's traumas in her life, correct? Uh Yes, I did uh, okay. give her an instrument to assess for any trauma exposure throughout the entire lifespan. Yes, yes, it's fine. And you wrote that Ms. Hurd's exposure to a traumatic event, namely one of the sexual assaults by Mr. Depp, what? more than satisfied this requirement. Did That's you not, not write that in your notes? No. That is not what I wrote in my notes. Do you have my notes? So we and can you look administered at that? a structured clinical interview based on that trauma, correct? Not exactly. It's not quite right. Now, Dr. Hughes administered a full intimate partner violence assessment, correct? That's not a psychological assessment. <laughs> we can't assess for intimate partner violence. That's an event. That's an event, Dr. you Hughes fool. administered a full intimate partner violence assessment, correct? She stated that, and that's actually something I'm rebutting today. Okay, <laughs> and, and you reviewed her psychological testing, correct? I sure did, yes. Okay. Oh my and God. are you aware that in September 2019, Ms. Hurd had a trauma-based symptom on many of those valid tests. Valid tests? Um, can you be a little bit more specific? Many of those do valid you, tests, which tests are you talking about? Do you have a recollection of that, September 2019? She administered all of her testing in September 2019, so I'm not sure which one, oh, except for the CAPS-5, which was 10 days after mine in 2021. 
Now, Dr. Hughes mm. clinically evaluated those symptoms and established that Ms. Heard does have PTSD from the totality of the intimate partner violence by Mr. Depp, correct? That's what she stated, yes. Okay. That's what she stated. That doesn't mean it's correct. Now, Dr. Anderson's clinical notes that said Amber had come to Objection, a hearsay. I, have, I haven't even asked the question yet, Your Honor. Are you going to read her notes? Well, let me, no, no, actually, I, I wasn't going to read her notes. No, okay. I was going to ask a particular question. Okay. You talked about danger. Do you recall that in your testimony? Yes. All right. Now, if, if a, a patient comes to you as a couple's therapist mm -hmm. with two black eyes, would you assess there, that there may be a potential danger there? Sure. Okay. Did you read Dr. Anderson's notes? I believe I did. Now, you administered the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory 2, the MMPI 2. Do you recall that? Yes. And you used that to determine whether Amber had PTSD, right? It, not by itself, but it was a part of the data. Okay. And in the 60 to 70 T-score range for that test, which, quote, deliberate attempts to mislead are uncommon, common, end quote. Isn't that correct? Sorry, could you repeat that? In the T-score... Mm -hmm. section mm -hmm. of that for which assesses deliberate attempts to mislead do you recall she scored a 60 on that test correct so there are multiple t scores for each scale so i'm not sure which scale you're talking about okay let but us look at it deal with that later <laughs> so you would agree that you need to well, follow ethics and best practices in forensic psychology correct yes oh do you okay. know better and the two primary Elaine. sources are the american psychological association ethical principles and professional code of conduct right mm -hmm. and the american psychological association's specialty guidelines for forensic psychology correct yes and specialty guidelines 1.02 states that forensic practitioners quote, strive for accuracy, impartiality, fairness, and independence, correct? Yes. Okay. And specialty guidelines 1.03 states that you have to avoid a conflict of interest, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, in addition to not listing the four hours you've spent with Mr. Depp, Mr. What? Walden, and Mr. Chu, and Ms. Vasquez. That's an interview. You also did not list that you spent an hour with Dr. Shaw, correct? That's incorrect. <laughs> That's you, incorrect. You say that, you, that the designation I said that you spent During my deposition, I also clarified this. I didn't spend an hour with Dr. Shaw. There was an introduction with the attorneys present on Zoom. My time on that call was less than 30 minutes. Oh, but you still didn't disclose it, did you, in your reports? No. Okay. Now, you are not, you have not been asked to testify about Ms. Hurd's behavior in the context of her relationship with Mr. Depp. Is that correct? I was asked to testify about somebody's behavioral mental status in general, so that can include behavior involved in a relationship with Mr. Depp but not specifically. Can, can you pull up day 10 of uh, the trial testimony at page 2710, Michelle? 2710, lines 12 through 18. May we approach? All right. Oh, Elaine. This is what floundering looks like, grasping for straws. I mean, trying to claim that an interview in, with where you're de deciding, you're being interviewed whether or not they're going to hire you in a high profile case with a lot of money on the line, um, you know, that characterizing that as like having going out to dinner for drinks with this person is dishonest. And I think that everybody knows that. Like, you're not fooling anybody with this stuff, Elaine. And you don't look good. People don't like being treated like they're stupid. No one likes that. And nobody likes this weasel stuff.
these weasel words, you know, being swarmy. That's what she's doing here. <sighs> and, you know, she'll sit here and complain about Dr. Curry's taking too long to answer the questions, but look at her. Just Thank sitting you. here, <laughs> wasting yeah. people's time. Okay, does, does the witness also yep. have... Okay. Yep. So, Dr. Curry, this is your testimony from day 10 in this case. And if you can look at page 2710, um, line 13. Now, is it your... My question was, now, is it your testimony under oath today that you have not been asked to testify concerning Ms. Hurd's behavior in the context <laughs> of her relationship with Mr. Depp, including any abuse? And your answer under oath to this jury that day was, that's correct. Yes. Correct? I okay. still agree with that to that question. All right. And you have not made any determinations, <laughs> including any opinions, that Ms. Hurd abused Mr. Depp or Mr. Depp abused Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. Okay. And, and in fact, you said that's outside the scope. Yes. Right? yes. Okay. Of psychology. And you cannot testify whether Amber Hurd suffered any emotional distress as a result of any of the defamatory comments that she has alleged Mr. Waldman Damn. made through Mr. Depp, or Mr. Depp made what? through Mr. Waldman, correct? Objection, Your Honor. What does that have to do? you want do? me to read my response? What's sure. Objection. I'm sorry. What I, oh, hold on, Dr. Sorry, Curry. That's okay. Oh, what's the objection? Are you on approach? Okay. What? What does that have to do with anything? Like, this is the, this is what I mean. That has nothing to do with her psychological assessment of Amber Heard and her diagnosis of BPD and histrionics. And Elaine knows that. But her strategy is to try to use little things like this to make Dr. Curry look bad or incompetent or something like that. It's ridiculous. Now, you have not rendered any opin opinion as to whether Amber Heard exhibits patterns of behavior that would suggest her allegations of abuse against Mr. Depp are false. Would you agree? No. I mean, yes, I would agree with that. Oh, thank you. And you have not... No, that's right. That's all I've got. No further <laughs> That's all you've got. Yeah, because you don't got nothing. You don't have S-H-I-T. All right, guys. Unbelievable. That was embarrassing. The skit. Yes. What's that? It's a structured clinical interview. Uh, it's for rendering a diagnosis. It's best for treatment because you're asking direct questions of the examinee and about symptoms. So if you have an examinee who has a tendency to minimize, you're not going to get much information. Why didn't you use it? Because, uh, well, first of all, I had a limited amount of time for my evaluation. And I had already had to uh, use, just to complete the interview was extremely time consuming. Um, and I had to even restructure it into handouts so that I could keep Ms. Hurd on track. I determined based on that, so this is where you would make an inference. So because I was having difficulty um, getting direct answers to my questions from Ms. Hurd, um, I had determined that creating forms of those questions would be a better use of the time, which it was. And then I further deduced that adding on the structured clinical interview would probably be unproductive, given that I had limited time and needed to use the best, most reliable methods for getting information in that time. You were asked about the APA specialty guidelines. Yes. Specifically uh, 1.02. At yes. 1.03. Mm -hmm. Have you complied with them? I have. No further questions. Thank All you. Right. Boom. Thank you. Dr. Curry, you can have a seat in the courtroom. You're ready to go. Thank you, ma'am. Wow. They had nothing. They had nothing that they could use to try to impeach Dr. Curry, to try to show that she lied about anything. Like, they, Amber's team had literally nothing. They resorted to bringing up stuff that they already asked her the first time she was there and literally wasting everybody's time with repetitive nonsense because they know what Dr. Hughes did. They all know, they know Dr. Hughes lied, they know Amber lied, and this is just pathetic. 
I think it's insulting to everybody in this room 